Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Matt here. Today I'm making an update video for my KRG C4 chassis. I did do an initial video on this chassis when I first got it. I pulled it out of the box and I hadn't used it yet, but I did go over all the features, generally speaking, for this chassis. So if you want to know about the chassis and its main features, you can check out my initial video because I don't want to repeat a lot of what I said in that video. I want this to be more of a supplementary update to the video, show some small details that I didn't know of back then or that I didn't quite show as well as I want to, as well as obviously give my thoughts and opinions after running this chassis in a bunch of matches. So I've had this chassis for about two months. I've ran it in probably close to eight or nine matches now. All the matches have been rimfire PRS style matches. I haven't run a center fire match with the C4 yet, although I do have some center fire events lined up for 2023. I'll probably pop my Zermatt Origin build into the chassis and run it for that, but I don't foresee my opinion changing running center fire in this versus rimfire. It's just one of those things. Once you run a chassis like this in a couple matches, uh, I can generally tell what I like and what I might not like about a chassis doing so. Anyway, obviously the chassis also does look quite a bit different because it has been Cerakoted. I sent this off to Dimitri over at Spec Ops Coatings and this is a burnt bronze color, but I'll go over the, um, the Cerakote job and the laser engraving work in more detail when I do my setup uh, overview in the future. So you can stay tuned for that if you're interested. I also did want to mention that Carriage sent me some goodies for the Carriage C4. I totally wasn't expecting it at all, but I guess they saw my first video and they reached out to Tom over at Gobic Tactical, who's my sponsor, and through him they sent me some some stuff in a package that was a total surprise and I'm very appreciative for that because I wasn't expecting it. But they sent me two four-end weights. I do have one installed in the chassis at the moment, but these are how they look like. They sent me two rear weights, which are these little guys here. And they also sent me a clamp system that I'm using with my Atlas bipod at the moment. They call this their Delta lug system and it works in conjunction with the built-in Arca rail on the C4. So I will show all those in detail and also obviously show some other features up close that I may have missed in my first video. But going on to the C4 here, I've been very impressed with it so far. I think overall the chassis is really well thought out and well designed. As I mentioned before uh, in the other video anyway, I did come from using a Whiskey 3 as sort of my main competition chassis. And if you run a Whiskey 3 or an X-Ray, the ergonomics on the buttstock area will feel, will feel very similar to the C4. You can just tell looking at them, they're a very similar design in terms of the ergonomics. So it was sort of a natural transition from the Whiskey 3 to the C4, but it did feel substantially different because of the weight and balance of the chassis. The Whiskey 3 and the X-Ray were fairly lightweight chassis. Um, I did take my Whiskey 3 here in the configuration that you see, and I did put it on the scale. Now this isn't bare bones. I do have a bag rider, the aluminum trigger guard, a barricade stop, as well as this 12 inch Arca rail on it. Oh, I also have this thumb shelf. And this came in on the scale at four pounds and eight ounces. I took my C4 and also put it on the scale without any weights on it. So I didn't have the four end weight and the C4 came in at six pounds, six ounces. So it's about two pounds heavier and a lot of the additional weight is in the buttstock area. So that said, obviously it is gonna balance and feel a little bit different. And I did go ahead and install a one of these forend weights, which you can see are quite large. And I installed that at the very front of the forend here to help balance it out. So right away, my, my entire rifle system was increased in weight pretty substantially, which is what I was looking for. So I didn't mind that at all. But if you just take your current rifle out of an X-Ray or a Whiskey 3 and you drop it into the C4, it's gonna be immediately heavier and more butt heavy as well. If you like the lightweight of the other KRG chassis, you can't really mimic that light of a weight setup in the C4, you will have to add additional weight if you want it to balance the same. So that was sort of the biggest difference. Besides that, the C4 did perform as expected, which was 
phenomenally. The additional room you have on the built-in arc rail now is really nice. I did shoot an ACC, one of the older ACCs for quite some time, and going from the ACC to something a little bit shorter with the arc rail, I did feel at times a little bit crammed with the arc rail space that I had available to me on the 12 inch, but this is now the same length as the ACC arc rail, so you can play around with your accessory positions and stuff and have a lot of room in order to run like a bipod at the front and a bag at the back depending on what the stage demands. I also did want to mention that more recently I have gotten a ton of questions come in about the C4 and my pains about it obviously because I've been posting a lot more content with the C4 but I think a big catalyst for the amount of questions coming in is the fact that MDT finally released their ACC Elite and along with like the Matrix Pro that was released more recently as well there's a lot of chassis on the market that people are obviously comparing to each other and they want to know which one might have the best features or which where they should spend their money. So I will speak about my personal opinions about the C4 in comparison to some other chassis on the market, but I'll do that at the end of the video because not everyone's gonna be interested in that. Before I bring the camera in up close, I do wanna mention that obviously I have been running this thing pretty hard in matches, so it's not gonna be in pristine condition. You will see some scuffs and some dirt and stuff on it, but that's just because uh, I use my gear. Before I go in detail about some of the small things on the chassis I wanted to talk about, I did want to show the weights and the clamp up close. So this here is the forend weight and this is 1.2 pounds or 19 ounces. You can see there it's quite a bit longer than the smaller like MDT weights for instance but it does fit in the four and I'll show you that in a second and it fits two of them and I do have one installed already. And these little guys here are the rear weights which weigh in at 3.7 ounces each. And again, they sent me two of these. I don't have them installed on my chassis at the moment. And this is the Delta Lug clamp, which is your standard arc rail style clamp, but it also has this quick lug system which works with some grooves in the forend. The first thing I will mention is the barrel clearance. So I did measure with the cover on the forend. This can accommodate a one and a quarter inch barrel, which I know, you know, some rimfire guys for sure are running these huge truck axles with no taper, just straight 1.2 or one and a quarter inch barrels. And you can accommodate that in the C4. So with the forend cover removed, you can see the single forend weight that I have installed at the very front and obviously how you could add another one behind that there. So it fits two in total. If you combine the 19 ounces, that would be 38 ounces in total in the foreign that you can add. And it's pretty crazy because each one seems to have uh, two, four, so 10. 10 spots for the little fastener screws to attach. Oh, probably a little bit overkill in terms of actually holding it into your chassis, but they do come with the 10 screws. You can see I have all 10 installed in the first weight there. And you can also play around with the position of the weights. You don't have to install them in the two halves. You can slide them anywhere you want in the forend. And since I have the video zoomed in here, I can give you also a good look at the Delta lug system here. So the arc rail is this dovetail on the side. You have M-lock as well as the really right stuff R-lock dimples cut in, but these horizontal slots are for the KRG Delta lug system. And I did highlight this in one of my match videos, but I know not everyone watches those in detail. So this clamp system, it's a normal arc rail clamp. You can use it on any other arc rail, but it also has this little lug, which you can quickly unlock by pressing this rear button. So you can throw this onto the chassis and you just have to make sure that the that the knob is tensioned where it's not going to just fall off the chassis, but it's loose enough where you can slide it. And that way you just have to depress this button to unlock the lug and it'll slide freely. As soon as you take your thumb off that button, it will find the closest slot and that lug will lock into place. So it's a sort of quick 
quick engagement. Um, you can use it for certain stages if you know you'll need your bipod in one position and then move to another position or if you want to just eject the bipod right off the front of the chassis, which is more often what I use this feature for is just a quick ejection of the of the bipod if I don't want it halfway through the stage or something like that. Now I do want to mention they sent me this um, Delta lug clamp, but you can't just attach your bipods straight to the clamp. You do need sort of an adapter plate. So luckily I'd had this Atlas bipod with the ARMS 17S mounting system, which are, is just the two screws. But you can see here the plate to mount the ARMS 17S is an additional accessory to the Delta lug clamp. So just to reiterate, this Delta lug clamp is this top portion here, but you still need some sort of adapter plate to attach your desired accessory onto the Delta lug system. So in this case, I have the Atlas two screw mounting plate, which is the ARMS 17S. They also make one for like an Atlas bipod, as well as a Picatinny uh, section to mount onto this clamp. Now, unfortunately, as of right now, there's no way to directly attach a SkyPod to the Delta Lug system. And I was running a SkyPod before this. I still have it, but with the Delta Lug system, I've been using my Atlas. I did inquire about it. I sent them an email and their reply to me was, uh, you could use the pick rail attachment and then just clamp your your SkyPod to the pick rail, which um, to me, that's kind of a silly proposition because you, you don't want to add such a large stack above your bipod because the higher your bore line is to the pivoting section of your bipod, the more tipsy it would feel, at least in my opinion. And I didn't want to add so much height to the bipod, just my opinion. So currently you can't attach a SkyPod cleanly to the Delta Lug system. And that would be to me, the biggest downside at the moment. But anyway, might as well cover the rear weights since we're on the topic of uh, the accessories that KRG sent me. Now each of these rear weights weigh uh, 3.7 ounces and they're sort of this polished steel and you can see they do have the KRG logo on either side because they can be attached to either side of the buttstock. You can see here there is a little section where they fit in nicely like so. But if you wanted to take the same weight and install it onto the other side, you obviously need the KRG logo to be showing <laughs> so everyone can see your bling and it fits one on either side. So in total, you can have 3.7 ounces on each side of your chassis. And what's actually pretty cool is there's also a spot to put this weight underneath this grip here. So I thought this was a pretty cool feature of the chassis because I wasn't aware of it when I first got it. But you can see there under the grip panel, there is a little socket to perfectly fit this weight in there. Anyway, I thought that was really neat. In total, I guess, in terms of proprietary weights, the the C4 can hold three of these rear weights, one, two, three, and two of the fore end weights. Now, since I have the grip panel here, I also wanted to mention this here is the thumb shelf grip, I believe is what they call it. And it basically has this extended thumb shelf on the side, but it also gives you this finger support, which helps index your trigger finger properly with a little bit of support here. Now, if you don't like this finger support here, you can remove it. But in the previous video, I mentioned that it might be a little bit annoying because there is a pin sticking out here, but this is actually easily removable. I just hadn't tried in that video, but you can just get a pair of pliers and it's just friction fit into the grip panel. So if you wanted to, you could remove this finger support and then reinstall your grip panel. And it would look a little bit strange because you have a few holes here that aren't doing anything, but you could get rid of your finger support and just run it like a small size uh, grip panel. Now that I have the grip back on here, I did want to just give my quick opinion on the thumb shelf grip design. Personally, I'm not actually a huge fan of the thumb shelf that they put on this grip. You can see here, it is quite prominent and it is comfy enough to use. But from this angle, hopefully you can see that the thumb shelf is pretty far away from the center line of the chassis. And what that makes it feel like to me personally is 
when I have my thumb on the thumb ramp here, I feel like my grip is sort of canted outwards, which is really unnatural for me, I guess. I just feel like instead of holding my rifle straight, my hand is canted outwards. So I naturally put my thumb up a little bit higher on this secondary shelf behind it, where it's more in line being straight up and down. It's just totally habit, but I noticed that right away. I did try and see if I can get used to the thumb shelf on the side here, but I just never could. So I, I have my thumb sort of up higher on this secondary shelf here, and this one doesn't really get used. It's not a big deal, it's still really comfortable, um, but I thought I would mention that because I did try this thumb shelf grip without having felt it first, just because you know these weren't available in Canada at the time, but I don't really use that thumb shelf. The magwell adjustments worked as you would expect them to once I tuned my Voodoo mags to the KRG C4 magwell here. They worked fine. None of the adjustments have ever come loose or slipped on me. And as I mentioned also in my initial video, I did remove the side leaf springs because I just found they were unnecessary for my magazine fitment and my mags still drop free when I hit the mag release, but they fit in there really nicely with very little play. Now the front lip of the C4 chassis obviously has the adjustment to sandwich the magazine, but because of that, it does have, you know, just shy of an inch of material in front of your magazine, which at first I thought might not be ideal because you want your barricade stock to be as close to the magazine as possible, generally speaking. But I found that having this little lip between your magazine and this barricade stop face, it actually protected your magazines even more from pressing up into your bag. And I didn't really feel like the balance point was severely uh, negatively affected by the additional material here. Lastly, I did want to touch on the buttstock adjustments, mainly these thumb screws. I failed to mention in the previous video that two of these thumb screws are actually reversible. You can choose what side of the buttstock you want to run them in. So that's this screw here, which is for the bag rider adjustment, as well as this one here for your comb height adjustment. Both of these thumb screws can be reversed to the left-hand side of the chassis if that's what you prefer, but the length of pull screw can only be on this side. And there was also another thumb screw here for the buttstock, or pardon me, the butt pad height and cant adjustment, but you can see I did remove it and I replaced it with a uh, M5 threaded, just a regular cap screw. Now the reason why I replaced this thumb screw with uh, a regular screw here was to limit the amount of snag points. I noticed almost immediately before I even brought this chassis out to the range, I was doing some dry fire with it just to play around. And the thumb screw, again, that was here on the left side was getting snagged on my clothing very often, just carrying my rifle close to my body or transitioning in a stage. This would snag on my shirt and get kind of caught up. I don't adjust my butt pad height or cant during a match basically ever, so I was fine not having a toolless adjustment for this feature. But all the other all the other thumb screws I have on the right side of the chassis, they stay out of my way and they work very nicely. Now this adjustable bag rider here was a new feature for the C4 that previous KRG chassis didn't have. You can see it's a little bit reminiscent to the Matrix Pro, which has their sort of push button release. This one is a thumb screw and it's also not spring loaded, but obviously since it's on the bottom, it sort of just falls down with the help of gravity. And at first I was a little bit skeptical of how much I would use this, especially during a match scenario, but I actually found myself using it a couple times. And once you get used to deploying it quickly, you're not going to be too crunched, sparing you know an extra few seconds to deploy this during a stage if it helps you out. You can also adjust the position fore and aft of your bag rider using these holes, um, but I believe I just left mine in the default position here. But it's pretty neat. Again, this bag rider does work well in a pinch. As long as you practice with it, uh, it shouldn't take up too much time. All right, so I think I went over all the small details that I wanted to show in this video that I didn't show in my initial video of the KRG C4. And as promised, I will now give my opinion about the C4 versus some other chassis on the market, mainly the MDT ACC Elite, as well as the 
MPA Matrix Pro. Now I don't have an ACC Elite or a Matrix Pro, but I don't really need to own them in order to give my opinion on them. I've seen quite a few of them on the firing lines, of course. So in my mind, all these flagship chassis from these very big reputable companies that have been in the PRS space for quite some time, probably are very similar in terms of their quality in manufacturing and machining and how they have executed the features on them. You'll see a lot of similar features on these different chassis because they're all competing in the same space. And quite frankly, they have to have the same features or similar features in order to compete with each other, especially if, again, we're talking top of the line flagship chassis and these companies are asking premium prices for them. For example, they're all going to have now a nice long integrated arc rail with probably these dimples for the really right stuff R lock system. We're also seeing quite often a lot of magwell adjustments now because rim fire is exploding. It's obviously also beneficial to center fire shooters, but rim fire shooters are getting the most benefit out of these magwell adjustments, in my opinion. Now, not all the magwell adjustments are going to be the same. For example, the ACC Elite uses these dowels, which I, I guess you can't really be as accurate in terms of how you tune it, but they're trying to achieve the same thing. And MPA was probably one of the first chassis on the market to have an adjustable mag catch. So they've been doing it for quite some time as well. And all the buttstock adjustments, you know, being toolless and being quick and easy to use, we're just seeing those across the board and things like a nice big barricade stop. The Matrix Pro has that modular system where you can have different types of barricade stops and whatnot. And this barricade stop on the C4 looks like they just pulled it off of the ACC. <laughs> um, so, you know, again, we're just seeing very similar feature sets across the board and all the flagship chassis. And again, that's just because it's the way capitalism works. <laughs> if we are looking at companies competing with each other in the same space, you're probably going to find products that you can use very effectively no matter what company you go with. And that kind of makes sense if you look at some of these sponsored shooters that are sponsored by a specific company like, you know, MDT shooters or MPA shooters, they can make any chassis work from any company to be as competitive as possible. So really what I'm saying here is pick whatever company you want to go with and you can buy a nice chassis from them and make it work for yourself. I know some people probably wanted me to be a little bit more partial to one thing or the other, but that is the truth. Now I'm very lucky because my sponsor Gobic Tactical carries MDT, MPA, XLR, KRG. The reason why I went with the C4 is because it was sort of a natural progression for me coming from the Whiskey 3. As I mentioned time and time again, very similar ergonomics. And when I saw the sort of upgrades they did, to the design with the C4, it was just a really nice option for myself. But I have nothing against MDT or MPA or any other company. Uh, I just chose to go with the C4 and I've been very, very happy with it. So that said, obviously price is a factor. The C4, at least here in Canada, it's almost uh, like 900 bucks more than the ACC Elite, which is a very substantial price point. Price is going to be a factor, but at the end of the day, if it's a reputable manufacturer with a nice high-end, you know, quality chassis, you're probably going to be able to make it work for you. And that's my honest opinion about that. But anyway, hopefully you guys learned a little bit more about the C4 here. It's a very impressive chassis. I am absolutely loving this chassis in competition. I can't wait to use it for uh, lots of matches to come. And again, stay tuned for an upcoming video, which is going to go over all my current match gear, as well as do a complete rifle setup breakdown. And I'll go over the Cerakote job and stuff and all the accessories on the chassis as well. So thanks for watching everyone. Take care. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.